This is a marketing funnel, an action plan to help you structure all your marketing activities from awareness to purchase. But this marketing funnel is dead. This model is what industry leaders like GitHub and Ahrefs use today. And what's beautiful is that the process it describes is universal, relevant to any business with any budget regardless of how big or small your team is or how many resources you plan to spend on marketing. But before setting up the funnel itself, we put tons of effort into research and production to bring you these insights. So if you find these business insights useful, hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon to get a YouTube notification in your browser when the next video comes out. Now, let's dive in. The traditional marketing funnel starts with generating brand awareness at the top, driving engagement and sparking desire for your product in the middle, and facilitating a purchase at the bottom. But the modern day funnel goes beyond the initial sale to generate a cycle of continuous engagement and relationship building rather than a linear progression towards a single transaction. In reality, if you look at a single customer's journey, it's extremely chaotic compared to the one described here. And yet, this simplified, linear process is extremely effective to help you plan, execute, and monitor your marketing activities for the best results. A properly structured funnel will allow you to identify where individuals are dropping out in their buying journey and fix leaks in the funnel to generate more fruitful customer journeys on average. The benefits include more qualified leads, an increase in sales, stronger customer retention, better brand advocacy, and higher performing marketing initiatives overall. Step number one, raise awareness. The top of your funnel is about producing content related to the problem you solve and getting a massive crowd of people to recognize your brand as an authority on the topics you address. This is why all leading brands will post content like this one by GitHub, titled Skills for Developers in the Age of AI, which is a super hot topic that will drive tons of developers to GitHub's content. Educate them about the problems that GitHub solves, and yet it will say nothing about the AI tools that GitHub actually sells. Why does this work? This is a crucial first step because people don't trust and therefore won't purchase brands they're unfamiliar with. Like, where would you rather get your phone? Apple or pineapple? This is literally how reliable your brand looks before it becomes familiar to people. Now, because most businesses don't have an apple-sized budget for top funnel marketing, let me emphasize that it's not about how much money you pour into it. It's about figuring out what will get the most people to pay attention and what message you get across once you grab that attention. For a small company in a small niche, you can write on the credibility and success of others by showing up as a guest on a podcast or a blog, speaking at live events, or partnering with influencers who believe in your product. Or you can create your original content and work on your SEO. Just take the route that's most likely to have an impact. Another crucial component of success here is what message you get across. Remember that you're targeting people who've heard little to nothing about you before. So your product itself is likely to be completely uninteresting to them. Let me take this to the extreme just to explain why. Think of your audience as humanity before the invention of the shoe. You can't sell them a shoe because they lack the relevant education. They simply can't think of anything they can't do barefoot. So instead of trying to sell them on your product in the first place, raise awareness to the problem that your product solves and the value of solving it without emphasizing the product itself. In other words, don't sell them the shoe, sell them the value of walking comfortably across a mile of blazing sand. Step number two, nurture interest. As people stumble upon your content, you want to entice them to come back for more or start building a relationship. This phase is where your goal shifts from being noticed to becoming your audience's go-to. It's a game of producing enough unique items that address the issues your product solves and ensuring each item is useful enough to compel them to consume the next one. The main indicator of success here is the increase in returning traffic. And again, while this does take some effort, nailing it is not necessarily a matter of investing huge budgets. Whatever methods you rely on to generate awareness in the first place, the key to generating traffic is the quality and the consistency of your output. Just look at the frequency of posts that pop up when I search for content marketing on Ahrefs blog. This consistency conveys robustness and authority, and the quantity on this page is enough to keep me coming back here for months. 
This still isn't the best moment to make your sales pitch, but because prospects are becoming deeply involved in what you have to say, you can more easily nudge them to check the solution you offer, like in this example. Ahrefs teach their readers marketing, but they do it using screenshots of their product. This demonstrates what I can do with the product without a straightforward sales pitch. But hang in there, because the sales pitch won't be a turnoff once prospects pass a certain point further down the funnel. Step number three, spark desire for your solution. If top funnel content was about high level problems your audience is facing and generating brand awareness around them, now's the time to narrow down the focus to people who are already aware of your brand and present them with your solution. This is traditionally called the middle of your marketing funnel, which is a home for content like this piece. An introduction to how GitHub's Copilot helps developers make the most of generative AI. People searching for this content will be those who are already educated about the problem. So it's no longer about reaching the masses, but tailoring a message to your ideal customer. And what makes these examples so compelling is the detail of how the solution perpetuates customer success. This is a classic example of a bridge to step four, facilitating a purchase. This Google Ads email is laser focused on getting people to use the product. The Power Copy and CTA are consistently focused on creating an ad, there's a how-to list in the middle, and the social proof at the bottom depicts the benefits of following through. However, because people reaching this stage are already educated, they will also be checking your competitors' content. At this point in their journey, your leads need to compare, so make it easy for them by highlighting your advantages. At times, this can be achieved by being quite direct. Lining up your features against your biggest competitors. Your mid-funnel content is about glorifying your product's impact, not about selling it yet. However, your sales pitch could be waiting just one click away under a CTA button. Other marketing activities for this stage include landing pages, product videos, feature announcements, product demos, your pricing page, and the checkout through which the purchase is made. And even though your leads have come all this way, over 99% of them still won't make a purchase making it extremely important to apply high converting practices like the one I've listed in this pricing page video. The biggest mistake product makers make in this phase is basically explaining too much about what the product does, when users really want to know what they can do using the product. Google Ads, for example, doesn't describe how the ads work. Instead, it focuses on how the product is used and what it can be used for. Remember that for your customers, Purchasing is just a milestone on the way to something else they want to achieve. This is why your sales pitch is so much better when focusing on your customer's success. And the next stage is exactly about this, unlocking their long-term buying potential by focusing on their needs. Step number five, encourage adoption. Let's say your customers purchased your product. That still doesn't mean they're going to use it. A fun story here. AppSumo, a website that offers time-limited discounts and lifetime deals on trending software products, is tremendously successful in generating sales. But the problem is, buyers will purchase thinking it's a bargain and never install the software. Other customers will abandon your product due to poor first-time user experience, lack of onboarding support, or because it doesn't meet the expectations drawn from your marketing materials. It's practically impossible to satisfy all customers, but when one of them ditches your product, it's crucial to find out why so you can patch the leaks in your funnel. Or send them an email like this one. This is why triggering an automated deactivation feedback request like this one is so useful in software products. Given that these are customers who've already gone through the trouble of buying your product, if you don't catch them now, the lost opportunity is huge. Just as it is in the next step of the journey. Step number six, cultivate loyalty. This step is about helping consumers enjoy your product so they renew their subscriptions or come back to buy again. Failure to do this will reflect in what's called churn. The recommended goal for a SaaS product is to lose no more than one customer a year for every 20 you've acquired. But KBCM Technology Group surveyed 100 private SaaS companies in 2023, and the median annual gross dollar churn was as high as 12%. This is why Grammarly sends me these emails gamifying my performance with productivity scores and comparisons. This kind of content is fun, and it gets users hooked on the benefits of a product over time. But most important at this stage is not the content you provide. 
The cardinal practices for user retention include highly devoted customer support and collecting user feedback. For small to medium-sized products like Bloxy for WordPress, it's common to see active users sharing feedback and feature requests on social media groups like this one. Complementing this with feature announcements and release notes that surface the efforts made in response to their requests. At Freemius, we organize meetups, providing an opportunity to talk shop, chill with other makers, and share their input on solutions face to face. As long as you maintain the cycle of supporting customers, listening to feedback, actioning it, and surfacing your efforts where users can see them, you'll be able to encourage them to take additional steps number seven and number eight. Step number seven is about motivating expansion encouraging satisfied customers to purchase additional products, buy add-ons, or upgrade their plan, based on the insight that people who've already purchased are far more likely to purchase again. Some upselling will occur spontaneously, but to optimize for this, you'll need to look into how your product is structured. One of your most important decisions is which deals you offer for what price. This practice dates back to fast food chain combo meals and cereal variety packs. In the software world, driving expansion is about offering fully functional low-tier plans that let you do nearly everything the product is designed to do, but put limits on certain features, allowing you to enjoy them until you hit the cap and need to upgrade. If you want some ideas on how to design this process, check out this video dedicated to conversion in freemium products. Another phase you can encourage customers to enter is step number eight, promoting advocacy and affiliation encouraging customers to spread the word and help you reach more customers. Like expansion in the previous step, advocacy will occur spontaneously when customers love your product and recommend it to people with similar needs, but it can be intentionally promoted too. A common method famously used by companies spanning from Tesla to Dropbox is offering referral programs and programmatically discounting customers when their colleagues, family, and friends purchase your product using a referral code. Customers with social influence can become your affiliates, full-time marketers who will professionally promote your product for a share of every sale they help you make. This has been a huge boost for small-sized companies like Code Snippets, who invite, assign, and track their affiliate performance using the Freemius dashboard. When your most loyal customers become your advocates and affiliates, the marketing cycle is complete, leveraging them to drive more leads into the funnel. But we're not done yet. The real power of this activity structure is unleashed only when you track, measure, and analyze the data collected in each step. Every online content platform today includes dedicated tools that assist you in doing this. Google Analytics or Ahrefs will collect website demographics. Email campaigns will be tracked with tools like MailChimp or ActiveCampaign. Product use, sales, and affiliate performance insights are made available by monetization platforms like Freemius. These insights are crucial to understanding who your audience is, what content and features they need, who is leaking through the cracks in your funnel, and how you can adjust it to direct more leads to follow through with their buying journey. If you found this video useful, you might want to consider an easy dive into the freemius marketing funnel by hitting the subscribe button. Join our tribe of software makers who play it big no matter what business size they are, and hit the bell icon to get notified about more essential videos like this one. See you in the next video.